so after getting a short uh, term loan to review this device then the mobile world com conference 2017 came along with the nokia keynote and they said i would like to make our first smartphone announcement of today nokia 6 is going global and it's time for me to charge up and step up the game and review this product because comeback is real for Nokia. Well, here it goes. What's up, everybody? It's Link Droid, and this is my review of the Nokia 6. Take note that the Nokia 6 uh, release in China. Uh, still, it's still the same Nokia 6 that they will release globally. But first, let's get into the physical tour. At the front, we have an invisible sensor there for proximity and light, a small LED indicator, an earpiece, front-facing camera, and an elegant but low-profile Nokia logo on the top right. A 5.5-inch display which is stunning despite of being limited to 1080p. A fingerprint slash home capacity button with two capacitive navigation buttons on the bottom. On the top, we get a 3.5mm headphone jack. At the left side, we can find the SIM slot. At the right, a volume rocker and a power button. At the bottom, we get a mic piece, a micro USB port, and a bottom firing speaker which is decent but loud. Oh, and also did I mention this is all aluminum and at the back we got another microphone hole a rear camera LED flash and a Nokia logo in matte finish which is feel nice and more easy to grip on aside from the previous mentioned 5.5 inch uh, 1080p uh, display uh, with Gorilla Glass so under the hood we get a Qualcomm Snapdragon 430 processor which is not new but it's still fluid as is it has a 16 megapixel rear camera and 8 megapixel front facing camera, 3 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal storage, or 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage if you're gonna get the Art Black Limited Edition, which is, to be honest, it's just a counter of the Jet Black that iPhone 7 has, but still looks nice. He has that piano finish that I, I still like, but again print fingerprint magnet so <laughs> never mind it's also expandable with micro sd card up to 128 gigabytes it has a solid aluminum chassis like i said before a 3000 mAh battery fingerprint sensor and runs on android 7.1.1 nugget the 1080p screen here is nothing new since the release of the quad hd screen for smartphone but for something a mid-range type like nokia 6 it works pretty well and with the bezel that small it feels like you're holding the smaller phone. The color reproduction is pretty nice and the screen is pretty responsive. Alright next, multitasking is great again for a mid-range phone. Performance is I would consider overkill comparing to my powerhouse LG G4 but thanks to its 1080p screen it runs pretty smooth. Uh, a fingerprint sensor is fast and fluent, battery life is decent, and the UI is different but good enough. If you get the Chinese variant, uh, mobile data speed will be not that fast. But the good news is, uh, if you use Smart or Glow, the main two major telecom brands here in the Philippines, it will work. And another thing, if you're using Google Play more often, then the bad news is you can install Google Play Store here, which is kinda terrible especially for me that was hoping to get at least the Chinese brand of it and just install Google Play Store and call it a day. The audio quality is decent. It gets loud but it doesn't distort at any point. That's for the bottom speaker and for this small size, wow that's pretty impressive. But when I put my IEMs in like my KC KHD Candy Edition, it sounds surprisingly great. Well, the built-in music player supports playing uh, flag files, the lossless quality. The 16 megapixel camera quality is really similar to my friend's Huawei P9. But it performs well and very decent on the low light condition like my room right here. And for the 8 megapixel front camera, well, I would say it's really great as well but it starts to get grainy when you're uh, taking photo in low light. So watch out for that. So in a quick conclusion. Is Nokia 6 worth it? Hmm. 
I would say in between for a Chinese variant that I have for review but since this will have a global release of this that will include a Google Play Store I would recommend it for those who want to have their post Nokia phone especially for the millennials here that who doesn't know Nokia yet or haven't owned one I would say this is pretty uh, this, this is a good start phone especially if you hit Windows phone all right. Although this is not the first Nokia phone I got, I still have that. Where is it? Oh, well, look at that. I still have the Nokia X that released few years ago it's in matching red. But that phone is pretty basic for this standard. Also, I'm just going to sell this away for uh, for the collectors. And for the announced price of 229 US dollars or up to 12,000 to 13,000 equivalent here in the Philippines, this thing packs a punch. I'm gonna say Nokia recovered very well after partnering with Microsoft and Pale. I'm going to personally give them two thumbs up. I don't see you see one for going back to the smartphone market, and it's also a great move to start something small and releasing it to the Chinese market. But I think most of the major brands do that anyway, like Xiaomi. If this is going to be a keeper unit, then I'll gladly go back to Nokia and use it as my daily driver but I'm looking forward to the other variants that will come in soon and for the 3310 of course so thanks for watching my full review of the Nokia 6 if you like this content give it a thumbs up and if my lips sucks then give it a thumbs down don't forget to subscribe for more uh, tech gaming and random stuff here at Nick Droid and also, uh, there's a new upcoming release of my track coming soon on Spotify. And that's pretty much about it. Maybe some few announcements for mobile work companies will be live at www.dictor.com. Again, for more tech, gaming, and random stuff, make sure to check out other videos that I have here on Nick TV. And this is Nick Troy, and I'll see you guys later.